there are principles in life I am a teacher of the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom if you don't plant anything in a farm something will still grow because you are not the only farmer around your farm every time you are in a situation listen please every time you are in a situation that only god can step in with understanding having prayed package a seed speak to that seed and give it an instruction and sow that seed release if you just sow money is bribery it's not the money revelation the bible is full of the potent power of seed faith connecting your faith with a seed and a sacrifice to provoke god's hand for intervention i've done it countless times on behalf of this ministry i've done it countless times on behalf of myself my family my friends people i love seeds the seed that is in your hand can create a destiny that will surprise you if you know what to do with it please listen to me don't think i'm asking you to give me money no there are people who when they hear this they just frown their face not at all not at all god has been faithful to me are we together listen there are people who have turned their lives around overnight if there is one thing i know in my little walk with god is that your seed can bruise the head of the serpent i promise you i have seen people quarter to shame everything was against them it was obvious they are finished and they use their seed and turn the hands of life in a way that you cannot imagine my life is full of sacrifices psalm 126 don't turn there verse 1 to 6 you write it that when the lord turned again the captivity of zion he said we were like them that dream the first six verses the la the sixth verse ends by saying they that sow in tears the whole verses are connected verse six is connected to verse one god turning away the captivity of zion like a dream he says that they that sow in tears will reap joy he that weepeth bearing precious seeds the bible says shall doubtless return rejoicing bringing in the sheaves it's not every seed to be cheerful does not mean to laugh to be cheerful means that there be a merriment in your heart there are some times you will cry for the seed you sow hallelujah someone came over to my place today and the Lord instructed him to bring me a seed and quite a very serious seed just you know a military officer just came dropped the seed and when I saw it the seed was in dollars I said wow in this recession this seed and the Lord told me no 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 make sure you don't touch it this is your seed for something and the Lord told me, I started dancing. I said, thank you, Jesus. This is it. When God gives you seed to sow, it's intervention. No? Getting the seed to sow is an act of God's mercy. That you say, Lord, I must provoke this, but I have no seed. Then he gives seed to the sower. Those who know, only know how to eat anything plus their destiny, they keep getting bread. But those who want to create a future... Brothers and sisters, I have created realities in my life with seeds. I believe in the power of a seed. Listen, don't let people because of their cynicism. The imbalance, when a man creates an imbalance in scripture, you don't avoid that truth because it has been abused. You bring it to context and teach people. Brothers and sisters, a seed can change your life. Believe me. I have done crazy things in my life i thank god that is only god that reveals that, that is only god that knows the heart of men there are things if i tell you that i have done with seeds 
Some of you, you are not related to me, oh, but you will be angry. You will remove your shoe and stone me with it and say you are very stupid in this recession. See it. There was a year, I've shared it again and again, that God gave us an instruction. We were just resuming. Coin on here. And God gave an instruction. He said, so everything, everything, everything. I don't mean small. So everything, let it go. I said, thank you, Jesus. You are ready to lift us. That is revelation. By faith, Abel offered. You offer by faith. You don't offer by, by tricks and all kinds of, no, no, no. And we release it. Brothers and sisters, it didn't reach seven days. Seven days. More than ten times that amount came. Seeds. I'm not saying you should give carelessly, no. But brothers and sisters, the seed that is in your hands can silence a spirit that has destroyed your destiny for years. Nobody is moving forward in your family. You are just sitting down. And God is saying, look, you have to provoke heavens with a sacrifice. One day you get angry and say, Lord, I am tired of this. Anna did not have money to give, but she said, Lord, let's do it. Give me the child. I've given the child already as a seed. And God said, it's a done deal. There was a king in the Bible who they wanted to slaughter and defeat. It was very clear the nation of Israel would defeat them. And he carried his son, his future, and slew the child. The Bible says an indignation rose up to heaven. Battle ended. When God wanted to redeem man, it was an issue of urgency. God carried Jesus, the lamb upon the throne, slew him. Jesus cried and God said, that's not the issue. Man must be saved. This greed over the little we have is what has destroyed us. Get used to money leaving you to go and wait for you in your future. Get used to it. You may not have a seed, but brothers and sisters, let me tell you, there are many ways to give. Money is not the only seed. It's just the seed that can easily be exchanged. That's why. There are times that people have made radical sacrifices. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? Principles of divine intervention. Trace your life at the moment where God gave you specific instructions that you did things that almost brought tears from your eyes. And watch what happened. You just did not study it enough to know how to keep it going. I hardly share my testimonies. I stopped because I found out that it annoys a lot of people and I'm not ready to attract unnecessary, um, you know, people once they hear preachers talk, there are people who just get angry just like that. It's nonsense. Brothers and sisters, learn to sow seeds. But the most powerful part of sowing seeds is to give them instructions. This is the mistake many of us have been making. You package a seed. Some of you come and join the line. Apostle, here is a seed I'm sowing. I always ask people, what is this for? And the people say, for nothing, just, I just feel like seeing you. That's a donation. That's a donation, brothers and sisters. All seeds are not the same. There is a seed you give to the poor. There is something it does to you. There is a seed that you give to widows and orphans. There is a kind of result. There is a seed you put on the ground because you are tired of where you are. If the word of God were a lie, I would have died since. Because the risk I've taken with this word, it would have killed me since. But I believe him. I believe him. When I sowed that seed today, I was happy. The joy that filled my heart. I await the testimony that comes from it. Wanting a harvest that you have not scheduled to sowing is a waste of time. It's, imagine now, somebody who didn't go to the farm. He has a land somewhere. He just carries his wife and his children and carries a truck. And he just goes to an empty place. You will find wheat there. But whoever sowed January, February down to April is smiling right now. Because he knows it's harvest time. 
Brothers and sisters, I pray for us. May God kill greed from our life. This attachment to money, listen. This many people think wealthy people are the ones who are attached to money. It's a lie. Wealthy people in the kingdom have become wealthy because they have conquered it. Your seed is an instrument that creates your future. Hallelujah. Learn to release seeds. Learn to release seeds. Learn to release seeds. I'll never forget a gentleman who sent me a text. He sowed a seed. I remember it was when he sent me the text. Truly speaking, I remember. They sowed seeds and I was opening the envelopes. Most times it takes, it honestly takes a while. Maybe some days before I even open the envelope to see what is there and pray on it. And I opened the envelope and I saw five naira and a letter. The guy said this five naira was his Isaac. I know you will laugh and say, hey, this stupid boy, no. I respected that because that, that thing I knew will create a harvest. And the guy, I opened it and wrote some things like that. And then I just felt led to pray for him. Do you know it didn't reach two weeks? The guy sent me a text and said, I have never in my life seen favor like this. Five naira. It's not about the money. It's about the heart. Somebody was tired of where. How many jobless people have not sown anything and they keep moving around with CV? What must tell you the devil is fighting you? You carry a seed and say, God, please. I'm married with three children, no job. This mockery must end. I drop this and I tie it to my job. And then praise around that seed. Praise around the seed. And your brothers and sisters say, so this is what they are teaching you. This is how these stupid men of God keep eating your money. And all of a sudden, the heaven opens. Breakthrough upon breakthrough. You are praying to buy land. Oh Lord, please give me two million naira to buy land. I now have 150,000. Just top it up for me. And God says, you mustn't buy it. Just learn. Let me show you. And all of a sudden, someone stands up and blesses you. I think it was you, Ejimi, I was showing you. Was it yesterday? I was showing him the document of a property that was given to me recently. I said, God, what is this? What is this? For as long as you sow, whether you like it or not, the law is that you must reap. So if you have not sown anything, stop, stop saying, God, where is my harvest? And he said, what, what are you saying? A woman who does not take in, is she expecting a child? No, sir. No, sir. She do seasons of breakthrough in your life. Your seed is a weapon. Not just your prayer. Your seed is a weapon. Your seed is a weapon. One mama called me one time. I was led by God. Honestly, I felt so, I didn't know how to talk to her because she sounded like an elderly woman and she was praying for divine financial intervention. I said, mama, please, I want you to sow a seed. Not to me. I, I, did, I would never have the effrontery to tell that woman to sow into my life. I'm sure that woman will be older than my mother. I said, please try, connect with a seed. And the woman said, she doesn't have anything. I said, it's not true, mama. There is something you have. What do you do? She said, she farms yam. I say carry four or five tubers of yam. Find any church. I said, which church is close around your area? She said, there's living faith. I said, go there. Find four tubers of yam. Tie it and be praying, singing any song in your language you know while you march to the pastor's, um, uh, what do you call it? The pastor's office. Whether the pastor is eating the yam or not is not his business. Only a stupid man of God resents the seed of a desperate believer. It's not whether you are more than 50% of the things people sow into my life, I don't need it. It's not for me. I recognize what it is. Is God speaking to someone? Seed faith. Learn to connect. Learn to connect. Learn to connect. Learn to connect. In 1 Kings 17, when our time is gone, just write it. We don't have to project it. 1 Kings 17 from verse 7 to 6. From verse 7 to 16. 
1 Kings chapter 17, when you read from verse 7 to verse 16, the Bible talks there about Brook Cherith when it dried during the famine. And the Bible says that the Lord told Elijah to go to a place called Zarephath. And he said there was a widow there. God wanted to intervene in that widow's life. When the prophet got there, he said, give me water. She was running to go and bring water. And he said, please, and make some bread for me. And the woman said, I'm sorry, man of God. I respect you, but honestly, this is the last one I'm about to eat with my son so that we'll just wait until we die. And the prophet said, no, no. When you give, it does not end. When you give, you extend the life of whatever it is. The prophet was teaching her. He said, make it for me first. In our generation, they say that's a heartless and wicked, devilish prophet. But the moment she did that, the Bible says she lived off what was there until the famine was over. You can change your life. November, December is too short a time. No. November, December is too short a time, brothers and sisters. God can step into your life and do something in your life that you cannot imagine. Don't be surprised that you'll be celebrating New Year in your own house. Whereas right now you don't even have land. I'm talking to believers. Don't be surprised that you can give away up to 5, 10 million by December. Whereas what you have in your account now is not up to 10,000. Listen, I'm not talking nonsense. I'm not stupid. Don't be surprised. That after 10, 20 years that your wife has been buried, that she's going to celebrate New Year, two months pregnant. You do every calculation, you know it's not up to two months, but she's two months pregnant. Don't ask where the child came from. That right now, you are not even sure where your certificate is because you are tired, you have thrown it somewhere. But don't be surprised that you will be managing a business by the end of this year. Is it not God we are talking about? Is it not the God of heaven we are talking about?